Yo guys, here's Andrew again, here for another demonstration video. This video belongs in the series having to do with me learning Linux on specifically on uh, the Zing platform. And in this video, before I start talking about any of the challenges and other details, this video is basically me using the audio codec from the from a user application running on top of the uh, the Linux kernel. So without further ado, on the terminal here, connected to the Zybo board. Um, here is output from the kernel, and right now I'm already set to go. So here's the application, pretty damn simple. You know, when the application starts up, it gives the user some feedback on how to use it. But basically, the way this works is uh, the application is generating a sine wave, and I can change the frequency of each of the the sound coming from the uh, the codec. So. basically it. In addition to that, uh, I wanted to do more with this, but right now, as you can see here, the Zybo is connected to a, uh, a uh, peripheral. This is the PMOD mic. I've used this several times in other projects. I need to work on getting another way of uh, recording audio using this. Uh, for instance, I could have easily used the, uh, the mic in here, but unfortunately I don't have a mic, so I'm using what I have. But it would have been much easier to use the mic for reasons that I'll explain later. But using this mic here, it's uh, connected to the SPI interface of the Zinx processing system. And um, this is basically uh, the input from it. Unfortunately, I tried really hard to accomplish this, but it's really difficult to do real-time recording from the user, uh, from the user application, which I was, was, it, was be, it was to be ex um, expected. I thought maybe I can get it working, but unfortunately, even, even though I use timers and all, uh, from the Linux API, I still couldn't reliably sample from the from the the PMOD mic at the sample rate. So instead, what it's doing is it's sampling from the PMOD mic every like you know twice a second, and it's just displaying the output. So if I hit the mic repeatedly, you know you can see the number spike up there. That shows that it's grabbing the values correctly. And since I've used this microphone before, the, I, I know for certain that these are the values that I expect. And as for the product demonstration, that's basically it. But before I end this video, I just want to like mention a few things, basically frustrations. Um, this project wasn't too difficult. There were just few aspects of it that turned out to be a lot more difficult than I anticipated. Uh, where I thought where I thought I would have problems was getting my user space uh, driver to work, but that turned out to be, you know, not straightforward, but I didn't have to do much debugging. Essentially, I wrote the user space driver the first time, and it basically worked. So, in the source code here, uh, essentially, this audio object here is the uh, implementation of the, uh, the audio driver provided by uh, in the the, Zy the digital example example. Uh, effectively, what I did was I rewrote it over in C, and then I used a wrapper. C++ uh, class, so I can make it much easier to use, and that worked like a charm, basically. That was, there, were, there wasn't much issue with that. I had slight issues using the spy dev SYSFS driver, which I'm assuming means system file system. You know, unlike the I2C dev uh, driver, the spy SYSFS driver, I needed to, first of all, go into the device tree and add it a, a few lines there basically telling the kernel, uh, basically, I guess, telling, uh, is it U-boot that looks at it first? Essentially, I, I needed to add that entry so that the kernel knows that it needs to use that particular driver. In addition to that, I had to go into the configurations for both the for both U-boot and the kernel and then enable uh, the drivers there as well. And after doing that, the appropriate file appears in the file system. So just to kind of show what I mean. Uh, Alright, so where it says spy dev and there's the bus number dot and then uh, the slave number. 
you know, without doing the steps that I just mentioned, that doesn't appear, and if that doesn't appear, you can't really use the, the, the spy dev driver, and I wanted to use it. But after doing that, it works, and to be honest, it didn't take too much time to figure out. However, what did take a lot more time than I expected was getting the flash to work. Initially, when I you know, did the first time, uh, whenever I, I, I up, you know, started the board and had it upload from Flash, I got this weird message from U-Boot. Like, it would get up to the U-Boot stage, and the message I would get is uh, something along the lines of couldn't, like, read an image, or couldn't, like, image was saved in the wrong format, or something along those lines. And online, I found a bunch of uh, posts on different websites basically talking about that particular message. Well, from what I can gather, that message can mean any sorts of things. Uh, I think the biggest reason for it is the, the 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 kernel image is placed in the wrong spot in the in the boot file. That that I think is like the biggest reason for that particular issue. However, for me, well, I think that was my my issue was that basically, but not exactly. Reading those uh, forums online definitely helped me find what the problem was, but how I fixed the problem was based on two things like one person kind of mentioned this but not exactly but what i realized was when i whenever i generated the the boot file using the the peta linux tool command i noticed that the size of the boot file was very small compared to the fact compared to the size of the actual image the image.ub file uh, the image.ub file was like much larger than the boot file and once i saw that I begin I began to suspect that the the actual kernel wasn't being uh was wasn't being stored in the the boot the, uh, the boot file. Uh, I'm pretty sure the boot file doesn't do any like compression at all. So uh, I, basically, I realized that uh, if you look here, uh, basically what I realized there. Uh, this is the command that I had to type in to get it to create a boot file. This didn't actually work though, but if you look at the documentation for Peta Linux, it, they give you something similar, but they don't tell you to add this uh, kernel uh, argument to the command, which judging from the help, the help information that you get from the command, uh, it, it makes it seem as though you don't need to add it, but I needed to add that. If I didn't add that, I believe it only included the U-boot, uh, the first stage bootloader, and also the bitstream. Without it, it doesn't actually include uh, the kernel in it at all, so I'm not sure if I was... I was definitely using it wrong before, but to get this to actually include the kernel, I needed to have that. But in addition to that, I realized that you also have to specify where the kernel is, and you can find that in the, the configurations under... I believe you have to use uh, Peta Linux uh, config and look under the information regarding the flash. But basically, you know, the partition there, like where where the kernel is located, you need to tell it where it is. Because if you don't do that, then I believe it just puts the kernel right, like at the, like right after the U-boot file, which is not the correct place to, to, to put it. Uh, the U-boot is looking for the kernel at a very specific place that that apparently this command doesn't figure out, which I find su I found surprising because you would think you know everything is included, like all the configurations is already included in the the Peta Linux project, but it doesn't seem to be the case, which is very unfortunate. But this command still didn't work, still didn't work. So I'm not sure if I'm using it incorrectly. Uh, you know I believe this this has you know this offset has to be the key. Because what I did get in, did get working was using a uh, boot gen. Basically, I used boot gen from the, the SDK, and basically I just told it the same information. I told it the, you know, the the bootloader, uh, the first stage bootloader, gave it the bitstream, gave it uboot, and then for the kernel, I actually specified what the offset was, and I used the same offset that I used in this command. And when I programmed the flash using the resultant uh, boot file, then it worked. And that took me, uh, I want to say like three to four hours, just trying to figure out which was, which to me seemed a lot longer than it should have, but got it working and now it doesn't seem that bad. But 
uh, that's about it. Thanks to those who took the time to hear me ramble, and uh, have a nice day.